All right, guys. So today we're gonna be going over um, Modbus setup for uh, Symmetra PX 100KW uh, three-phase UPS uh, by Schneider Schneider Electric somewhere there. Um, yeah, this is a 208 volt uh, three-phase UPS, um, and we're gonna be going over the uh, Modbus integration setup for uh, third-party BMS um, for uh, copyright reasons I will be omitting the uh, BMS software that's in use and any applicable data to that um, I will be showing you the bare minimums of that um, I will not be showing any programming or graphics uh, just a basic setup for the uh, Modbus integration points and some just general notes to know when doing this in the field that that is not uh, made very clear by Schneider Electric or the APC notes. So this is the uh, point setup page uh, for the third party uh, uh, BMS system on the site um, as you can see. Uh, you have your points description, the current values that you're reading. Uh, it is a Modbus integration. Um, all the uh, all the registers are Modbus uh, unsigned integers, or 16-bit integers. Um, as you can see here, the uh, device, it's only a single device, uh, so it's address one for the device. Um, there is uh, Boolean registers here as you can see this is the main uh, register unpacked um, so I can't show you the programming but there is some uh, some math and uh, step down programming done to unpack the registers so pretty much each register has about uh, 12 to 15 um, uh, bits inside of it so so this, this is where the main uh, register comes in and it gets unpacked in programming um, and you can designate each uh, bit to a Boolean um, graphics item or something like that. Uh, this is just to state different statuses or alarms uh, from the unit. This is the uh, points list or Modbus register map uh, provided by Schneider. Uh, I know it's a single phase UPS. Uh, they're mostly the same. They, they have a designation for each phase of the UPS. So uh, phase A, B, and C, and then the uh, double E in characters for status or just generalized. Um, so for instance, this is that register for 40,001 which gets unpacked and then each bit here corresponds to a boolean um, in this case these are just statuses of what the uh, UPS is doing so for instance you would have a 40,000 um, unpacked bit 2 we can link it to like a graphic point or a, or a programming point to say that you know the UPS is currently in a reserve status that we'll go down again this is not the specific uh, points uh, register map for this UPS this is just an example they're most likely the same on a lot of these um, so as you can see uh, the reason why uh, all the points on the third-party BMS are unsigned integers 16-bit it's because that's what it designates in the uh, in the map and the register map here uh, you can see you have uh, mostly analog points uh, battery voltage um, input frequencies uh, phase voltage all that stuff it tells you what type of point it is read only um, and what the uh, value you're looking for there is going to be uh, now keep in mind some of these um, some of these points require additional programming and math work uh, to get them to read the, uh, the right thing. Uh, a lot of times they kind of break that down for you in the notes. If 
you have to do some kind of like uh, math or anything like that but for the most part as long as the uh, as long as the uh, the, the, the BMS system that you're working with uh, most of them these days they unpack uh, the um, unpack the registers being uh, 16 or 32 bit so it, it kind of gets the, the right value from the beginning um, so yeah this is just going over the register points and just some notes um, what I will be doing is showing the actual UPS and how we connected to it uh, there's something there that's not clearly noted in the instructions when you go to uh, tie in your uh, Modbus communication wire to these things and yeah I'll bring that up in a second and show you guys uh, how that is done so this is the actual unit uh, the UPS unit made by Schneider Electric uh, this is the unit's interface here where you can see values locally uh, for your line voltage and phasing and stuff like that and any alarm um, you typically won't need to do any uh, setup on this part uh, the Schneider electric startup guys usually take care of that what we're more gonna focus on is the integration part of it now this unit has the capability to do uh, Modbus over IP and uh, Modbus to BACnet. Uh, in this case, this setup is Modbus to BACnet. Uh, so, a special interface board is required for this. Uh, network management card 2, uh, which I have the instructions here from the uh, factory. It's the AP9635 uh, board. That's what it's called. I'll show you how it looks right here. So this is the actual board. Uh, this is a part that's referenced as AP9635. Um, and these are the wiring instructions that come from factory here. So on this particular setup, we're doing a two wire connection. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> uh, two wires are coming from the uh, existing BMS uh, Modbus uh, to BACnet interfacing uh, module and it's coming to the uh, UPS. Now this might be a little confusing to read for some people um, and I'm basically gonna break down what it actually means. So this Modbus controller area here, this is from the third party integration device or the BMS in this case. So this is kind of what you want here. What they're looking for is a four wire setup but not all Modbus devices have four wire setup. So our existing uh, BMS control device, which is the controller, only does a two wire setup, a positive, negative, and a shield or ground. So we're looking for this piece right here. So instead of connecting all these terminals at the Modbus device, we only have these two, two connections here. So it looks a little different depending on the device. So the Modbus device being two wire has an RX and a TX. Uh, <clears throat> particularly speaking uh, for this device, the, uh, the RX, uh, which is a, the receive, is the, uh, the negative wire and the TX, which is a transmit, would be the positive wire. So what they're showing here is that uh, they, they're still calling it RX, DO, and D1. Uh, based on on the on this board because that's just the terminology they use but that might not be the case on, on all Modbus devices you might have a device and it'll just say RX plus and TX minus or RX minus TX plus so you got to kind of uh, use a guide for that third-party integration device on how you want to set it up now some devices automatically bias so you would not need the 150 ohm resistor uh, as shown here but in this case the uh, BMS device that's in line actually needs uh, to do a biasing it doesn't do it automatically so on the end of the comm wire at the BMS uh, interface device it does have the uh, 150 ohm resistor now if you read through this guide it's very hard to, to kind of understand what's going on here um, 
and it has a uh, like setup parameters and stuff like that um, but it ultimately says that this card the AP9635 does its own internal biasing so you won't see a 150 ohm resistor uh, the only case you would need a resistor is if you have more than one uh, network interfacing boards or more than one uh, UPS module. So this is an example showing one board for one UPS module and then another board for a second UPS module and you have the 150 ohm resistor as a terminating uh, end of line resistor there. So what some people can get confused is in this part here. This is the Molex connector at the uh, UPS interface card. And there's two uh, connections here to be made. So you actually do have six terminals, uh, two Molex of three terminals each, one on top of the other. So you have one row, which is RX, D, D0 and D1, and TX, D0, D1. Now, what some people may not notice is that this part here kind of shows jumpers between RXD0 to TXD0 and then RXD1 to TXD1. Uh, since this is not a four wire connection, you must do this for a two wire connection just to kind of bridge the two. So as you can see here, see if I can get some focus there. The top Molex is TX and the bottom Molex is the RX. So we have the top first terminal is TX0 and the bottom is RX0. The top second is TX1, the bottom is TRX1. So as you can see here, uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but you essentially have a jumper from TX0 to RX0 and then from TX1 to RX1 and the main Modbus connecting cable goes on either or, it doesn't matter. In this case, it was put on the bottom in the RX modules, but they are jumped out together and uh, that causes you to do this four wire setup as shown here. So if you do not set this up correctly, you will not get a Modbus communication to the device and Modbus being the way it is, is a little bit hard to kind of verify that your connection is valid and it's working so this is just something to look out for on these machines here now i'm gonna get some pictures i don't actually have equipment to plug into but essentially you plug into this network card here with a laptop and you have some default ip parameters uh, to kind of configure this so in there you'll configure the uh, IP settings which is here they set a static IP for this board so when you plug in here you want to be on the subnet and an IP range of this to communicate but when it's brand new you have default IPs that you can access the board with uh, which should be in the install manual and plugging in here gives you a web interface you don't need any kind of software from Schneider or anything like that or APC but it does give you a web interface to uh to configure the modbus setting uh for the baud rate speed address and stuff like that which is essentially outlined back here um so that axis gives you these settings here a baud rate which is either 9600 or 19200 those are the only uh two speeds you can choose for this uh modbus device Parity bit, uh, you can set it to even, odd, or none. Uh, we usually just leave that default. I believe uh, it came default as none. And the target unique ID, which is kind of like the MAC ID for the uh, Modbus um, network. So in this case, the third party BMS uh, controller device, this one here, is considered the slave device. So that one has a target unique ID of zero. In most cases, if if the interfacing device is gonna be the uh, the master, it's gonna have the ID of zero. And in, in this case, the target unique ID for the actual card is set to one, which I showed you earlier in the Amadba string uh, for the connection. 
So yeah, I just wanted to go over kind of how to wire up and configure one of these as uh, I looked for some information myself and I ended up having to figure this out on the fly and there's not that much uh, detailed information available on these things. Um, <clears throat> So I'm gonna sh I'm gonna try to get some pictures of offline and show you what what the uh, web interface looks like where you set this thing up. But it's pretty straightforward once you have the actual manual and the setup manuals. Um, so yeah, that's uh, Symmetra from Schneider Electric and how to set it up for Modbus communication.